Speaker, please uh, turn off or silence your cell phone if you have one. Uh, Jill, can I get a roll call of the commission? Scott Brown, Tom Pat, <coughs> George Strander. Here. Lindsay Zock. Here. Wesley Jack. Here. Greg Strand. Here. Scott Kev. Joseph Domingo. Here. And Garrett Brown. Garrett's on his way up. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, approval of prior meeting minutes. Should have a copy of the draft <coughs> minutes from June 28th. Um, I do want to point out one thing. It, it seems to have me present, but I was not present. <coughs> Any, any motion to approve with that change or anything else? So move. Support? Any support? Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor of approving the, the minutes with one change that uh, would indicate that I was absent uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That's approved. Cheryl, any correspondence? No correspondence. Okay. Moving on to five, presentation of preliminary information, findings for the five-year comprehensive master plan, <coughs> phase one. Cheryl, are we moving right to Rosalind or let's? That would be my recommendation to have Rosalind do an okay. overview. All right. Rosalind, why don't you come up and uh, start need, us off. Do I need to speak in the mic again? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure working with you. Uh, some of you have been um, able to participate in two rounds of looking at, looking back to 2000 at the goals and objectives that were in the 2000 version of the master plan. And thank you for your patience as we work and continue to fine tune those goals and objectives. So um, they are, as we mentioned earlier, at the back of the, of the document. I wanna hit a couple of highlights uh, in the actual text. Uh, starting with uh, page two, as part of the master, ham master plan, plan process, it's important to get public input. So as you look at the key stakeholders that to this point have been engaged, and that's not to say that this is an all-inclusive list, but there's been uh, a very diverse array of community stakeholders involved in the process, and so there's a list of those people, and they're just not on the list. I mean, we've had actual meetings and conversations and interviews with um, every stakeholder that's mentioned here uh, in one way, in one form or another. I think you know that uh, the Albion Foundation administered a survey in which 242 community members participated. Um, overall, they were people who were very um, pleased with the amenities in the community. The two uh, object or two concerns I think that would rise highest would be roads, not surprisingly. I mean, this is Michigan. We have rough winters, salt, heavy travel, traffic, so that's not surprising that there was um, you know, a lot of displeasure, uh, concern about the conditions of roads and neighborhood streets. But the second was housing, and we spent a little time earlier talking about that, the housing issue. And so I'll, I'll cover that also. But those basically were the two biggest issues and concerns uh, that were raised by the public. Um, moving over to page. Five, I want to acknowledge the VISTAs that are in the audience. Many of you know that Albion College wrote a grant to secure the assistance from America Vista, VISTAs. Um, and it's a team of, I think it's 11. Did I get the number right? 11 uh, very skilled and qualified individuals. Um, and what, what is your major? Yes. So when I talk about qualified. Um, having somebody who has GIS knowledge is, is very extremely impressive. 
And so for us to have people like that on our team, and that's just one example of the talent that, that the co college was able to recruit to help build capacity. Because this is an aggressive, I mean, it doesn't seem aggressive, but when you look at the goals and the objectives, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And I think that we're not folks who just want to write something and let it sit in the sh on the shelves. And so my point is that having um, this talented team to help assist and, and bring this plan into action, I think it's going to make the difference. And I think based on my interactions with you, you want this to be a living document. Uh, moving forward to page seven, um, not surprisingly, in Albion, um, like most of this region, there's been a decline in population uh, over the, going back to uh, 1970, not surprising. Uh, moving to page nine, again, this, this um, demographic change is not surprising either. The two largest uh, age groups in American history are millennials and baby boomers. The baby boomer generation is aging. And so as a result, as you look at the very bottom uh, paragraph on page, um, excuse me, the very bottom sentence of the first paragraph on page one, in 2010, the median income, medium age in Albion was 28.1 years. Um, it had increased from 23.5 years in 1980 and 26.5 years in 1990. And so the point I want to make is that if you read it moving forward, uh, the medium age in 1980 was 23.5 years. Um, going forward 10 years, it was 26.5 years. And then going forward another 10 years, 28.1. So the point is that aging population, again, not a, not a surprising phenomena. The only thing that's a little bit discouraging is that um, Albion had Again, this is not surprising, but just the data supports what we know, that um, there's been an exodus of a lot of young people, probably at about the times that, um, you know, and I think about my generation. I'm from Detroit, and my generation was the last generation in Detroit, and this is my opinion, that went into the factories for a career. And, and I remember the oil embargo in 1970. I remember, you know, plants closing. And so people of my age, I mean, we, a lot of us left the state looking for jobs. And so my point in saying all of that is that plant, as plants close in Albion, uh, industri post-industrial communities, this exodus of folks my age is not surprising. But it also means that we haven't been able to attract younger generations to fill those gaps. In terms of the workforce, um, unfortunately, uh, going to uh, uh, page 13, as of 2015, over 42% of Albion's residents over age 16 were not currently in the labor force. So that's a little bit dis dis um, discouraging. And when we say not currently in the labor force, that means um, stay-at-home stay parents, you know, people who are choosing because they're raising young children. We're going to stay at home. We're not, we're not looking for jobs. We're not interested in jobs we're, because right now the focus is raising these kids. Um, another segment of the population that's not currently in the labor force would be elderly and retired, uh, chronically sick and disabled. However, this also includes many people who are prime age, who are discouraged. Yes, sir? who are discouraged and disillusioned and disinvested and have given up on trying to get jobs. Okay. So the, the question, I don't know if, it's, if I should let you finish and then we're going to ask, is that the procedure? Go ahead. Okay. So, you know, that, that really stuck out um, to me. And then there's like a section, I don't know if it was before or after, about um, poverty. But I think one of the things that I've been trying to think about is um, what you discussed in the earlier presentation that's true about like right now, I can think of um, a prominent couple. One of them is a retired principal. They moved to Marshall because of that issue. I can think of a, a faculty member who I knew from the college with the religion department. He, he went to Chelsea. Same issue, you know, having um, housing. So I see, I see that as a real need. And I think that, for example, the Sheldon Hospital um, or Superior Place, I think, um, is a benefit. Um, but then I guess the other question um, I'm interested in is what can we do 
you know, because we have to start somewhere. That's what, that's what your response to Mr. Mm -hmm. Barnes was, we have to start somewhere. But is there a way to emphasize helping to address that issue? Because it seems like if when we, when we do the, the um, housing development, we're going to try to attract people coming, you know, coming, relocating here. Um, but then, you know, are we assuming that they're going to be working in, you know, at in Kalamazoo or, or Battle Creek or Jackson? Um, that's that's so. I guess my, that's my question is, one is how do we draw I guess serious attention to that issue, and then also for the people we are thinking about attracting, what how are we thinking about where where they're going to be working? I mean, are they, are they going to have jobs here? Probably not. You know. So has there been discussion about that? At this point, we're still in the information gathering stage, but you're absolutely correct. I mean, this is a very, and, and uh, Commissioner Strander and I had a conversation about this yesterday. I mean, this is a very serious workforce development issue. Um, still more research that needs to be done, interviews that need to be done. And, and one tactic, for example, is for those folks who are in this group who want to work, um, maybe transportation for some folks, and I'm just using this anecdotally in response to your question, maybe transportation for some people is a barrier. Um, how do we assist in that in a way that there doesn't create a liability problem for the community in terms of transportation, but you know, what are the barriers that prevent some people from entering to the workforce that it would be an appropriate role for the, for the community to try to facilitate? So. Um, I'll be interviewing employers to get their perspective, and again, there's other key stakeholders who have different perspectives on this issue, but this is real. Um, and there, 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 there are other comments that I, I'd be glad to have with you offline, you know, okay. if that's appropriate, but uh, it's a serious issue. It's not one to make light of. However, you know, that's a reality, but in answer to your second question, the good thing, and, and I'll get to this in the, on the next page, um, on page 14, and I'm going to come back to 13. Um, the good thing is that we talk about one of the f one of the things that has um, one of the things that has limited prohibited uh, Albion's growth has been the fact that if I want to move here, where do I live? So the fact that we are looking at you know making changes in the housing stock that's a positive thing. So there are people who are willing to come, and, and I've had conversations with people in the room just today about people who are moving back. My point in saying that is that what this chart on page 14 shows is that there's a trend, and not just in, in Albion or Calhoun County, but that, um, for example, in 2012, and, and, and the, unfortunately, when you look at census data, you know, there's some data that's based on, you know, 2010, 2014, so the years aren't always consistent in terms of the, the document. But in 2012, based on this particular database, there were um, 50,000 jo 50, jobs in Calhoun County, and you can see that uh, uh, on the first column, under, uh, excuse me, first column, first row, and the actual figure is 49,979, about 50,000 jobs in Calhoun County. However, of the 47,300, if you look at the top row, um, under Calhoun County, county employment. So you had 50,000 jobs in the county, uh, 47,000 folks who were employed, but only uh, where that, if this is making sense, where the Calhoun County row and the Calhoun County column intersect, if you look at that number, 27,000, of the 40,000 folks who were employed, who lived in Calhoun County, only 27,000 of them worked in Calhoun County. And so my point is that it's a complex problem, you know, and, and I, I don't want to offer and insult your intelligence by giving you a simplistic answer. But part of the solution will be one part, building a housing stock to attract the people who are willing to live here knowing that some of them will in the short term work elsewhere as we work on an economic development strategy that's going to be supportive of the businesses that are here. But um, we've not done, again, we're still in the information gathering stage in terms of what that economic development strategy would be. Someone concluded from just the data that people are driving towards each other from perspective communities. 
Yes. <coughs> Absolutely. And, and then just kind of piggybacking on the transportation thing, because in the, the draft that was sent, it wasn't crossed out, but on page 21, there's the top of that um, second to last paragraph. And basically the paragraph's talking about um, Yes. You know, stemming the loss of tax dollars that are leaving, you know, like, like you know, right now, um, well, early in the document, you know, there were, um, I guess it was a survey report where it was saying, like, you know, home goods, groceries, um, uh, clothing stores, those kinds of things mm -hmm. as need, and, I, and some of those are being addressed, I guess, right now, but um, is, the, is, I was just kind of curious why that was removed and well, we're, is we're still going to get there, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, and again, we thought that it was premature to have that. When you make a public statement as a official public body, I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, that's pretty significant. Mm -hmm. And so I think the first thing to do is figure out, um, number one, what are the niches that we're likely to be able to attract? How, and the other side of that is, in reality, there's some consumer goods where, when you when you when you have a, a a store, let's say a grocery store, for example, I mean, a small independent grocery store is not going to be as competitive. And one of the things that can community residents or the community uh, respondent, the respondents of the community survey were seeking, were competitive prices. So, is it likely? when you have an independent grocer or a small chain competing against a larger chain that they're gonna be able to get the economies of scale to, to, to meet what the people say they want. They want to be, they want food options that are competitive on price. So if we, is it likely that we're gonna be able to attract, uh, a, and, and excuse me if I'm sounding muddled, but is it likely that we're gonna be able to uh, attract in a community this size a competitive grocery store that's going to be competitive in pricing. So my point in saying that is that rather than to make pr statements premature where there needs to be more steady research what, in terms of what's really feasible, what's practical, what's realistic, that was taken out. Because again, the whole purpose of this document is to say to the community, this is the big picture. We've looked at the challenges. we looked at the opportunities. we looked at the threats. Here's what we see right now. Are we moving in the right direction? And so all of that to say to you, we didn't want to prematurely say to people, we're going to be able to attract grocery stores that are going to be competitive in price. And in reality, that may not be a, a, a feasible economic model. So did that make sense? Yeah, I guess I would just, but the, the thing I was thinking about is if, if, we're, if we're planning for um, growth, mm -hmm. hopefully, so then with, could there be any acknowledgement of hopefully, because like for example with, with, um, with the presentation from uh, MEDC, the staffer was saying is that you know, some of the diagrams have you know, commercial spaces in the bottom mm -hmm. and they have residential on top. And so if we're planning on people living, let's say upstairs, we should be planning for people, things to be you know, in the commercial kind of area. So. And I agree. And because of what I did for 30 years, I am the absolutely last person who's going to say without some, a lot of thought, a lot of research, a lot of study, you should have this business. Uh, I think it would be irresponsible of me to say that. So I agree. But um, to, say it, to say publicly it should be this or this or that, that's the, that's the caution. That's the hesitance. Uh, a lot more due diligence needs to be done before we say it should be this. There are a lot of thoughts and opinions. And there's, um, there are people who say, I'd like to see it. And that's great. But the bottom line is, what should we do? And I think that we don't want to communicate to the public that we made the decision that it should be this. It should be that. And I think we, we just don't want to give the false message. So, did that make sense? So going back to page 13, the bottom of, um, the comprehensive plan update, I'm reading the very last sentence, is based on an understanding that, again, talking about uh, things that are going to be attractive to people who don't live here today. The comprehensive plan update is based on an understanding that the quality of housing impacts the attractiveness of the city, that's number one, 
which impacts the level of artistic and cultural activity, which again, with millennials, they're looking for vibrant downtowns. And not just millennials, I mean, people who are, who are looking to move into a new area, you know, what's here, what's happening. Number three, which in, impacts the number of entertainment options. Number four, which attracts, impacts the attractiveness to talented and skilled workers, and which impacts the level of economic activity. So it's almost like this, this circle where it all works together. Uh, we talked about the commuting patterns. Um, and we had, again, I don't know if I need to go over, should I, for the purpose of this form, talk about housing again, or do you think that, it, is that necessary? I know this is a different form than we just had. Well, I, th I think everyone was there. I mean, why don't you not, but then, uh, then if there's a commissioner who wants to go over it. So okay. And then skipping forth, again, the whole, uh, there was a rewrite since yesterday. And the reason why we're showing you the edits is because you got a document. There were changes, or you received a document. There were changes made. And it's important for you to know where those changes were made. So it's just that simple. So there was a rewrite of that document. And again, um, to your point, um, uh, Commissioner Brown, we, we don't want to make the business growth and development um, a goal to simplify what it is. Um, there are lots of relationships that a business and a, and a uh, local unit of government have in, in economic development, private partner, par pri public private partnerships. And so the rewrite talks a little bit about, you know, the EDC being the lead economic development organization, the way that the city can, can uh, contributes to economic development in terms of, um, and there are a number of ways, but for example, tapping into those networks, the networks that are gonna take the folks who are willing, interested in re-entering the workforce or some who might still be in the workforce. I mean, how do we best serve you? And we have to think regionally. I mean, there are organizations um, like, in, uh, I think this version talks about, and I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but in Battle Creek, um, there is a training curriculum that helps to prepare people for entry-level entry manufacturing jobs. Um, there may be strategic, creative ways and partnerships with maybe the churches, and I'm using this example, that they're willing to help transport folks who are interested to those types of training uh, facilities to get jobs to be competitive in businesses here as well as throughout the region. So um, that's one way that the community partners with the business community. Um, another part, partnership is, a uh, role is the work of this planning commission. And as we talked about earlier, I mean the zoning ordinance decisions that you make um, in, impact in, uh, business, business decisions. A third um, way is what we're doing here with this comprehensive plan and just the whole issue of place making. And so I'm very conscientious about what really can the city influence. It's one thing to say we can do all these lofty, wonderful things, but at the end of the day, where can we really make an impact? And so really the tone of this, this new narrative um, speaks to that. Also facilitating that EDC has a business incubator. So at the other extreme, um, you know, uh, dealing with entrepreneurship and, and business incubation and that sort of thing. So there's lots of ways in terms of the economic development strategy that will be crafted that, that uh, those partnerships can take place. Uh, downtown revitalization. Again, we talked a little bit earlier about some of the momentum. I think that one of the things that we'll be challenged to do, and I don't, I don't mean challenge in a, in a um, negative way, but is to identify, going back to your, your question again, uh, Commissioner Brown, is where are those niche opportunities? As we look at an economic development strategy, I mean, on the surface, it seems like there is a um, cultural entertainment niche in Albion. I think some of it, Will, will, and I have a marketing background, so when we think about segments, and so, you know, being 57 years old, what I think about in terms of entertainment is likely to be something very different than somebody who's 27. So when I think about kids and stuff, children's museum, uh, being somebody who loves children and spends time with young kids, I would come and do plan to come to bring my niece and a couple of kids to Albion um, to visit the kids and stuff, Children's Museum. And so my point is that I'm just one segment 
that would be willing to make the trip to Albion. I live in Lansing, and I can be here in about 50 minutes. Um, who's willing to, to take a Saturday to come to Albion. And I'm not just saying it just to be nice and say the right thing, but I'm serious. My time is important. But in terms of, as I think about things that I like to do with my niece, who's for, who I love, um, we have a wonderful museum in Lansing, um, Impressions 5 Science Museum. Um, this summer I took a, a totally different group of kids to the Science Museum and we just, they just did their thing and I just walked and you know, let them have a good time. I would bring kids here. And so my point is that as you think about me as a target customer in a market segment that would come to Albion and we think about that whole cultural, recreational um, niche for Albion, um, what other things would a woman, or not just a woman, but a, a parent, guardian, whoever, bringing kids to Albion, what else would we want to do? And so the things that we want to do in the summertime will be different than the things that we want to do in the winter. And so thinking strategically about your, your, your existing residents as well as your uh, target customers, what are the things we build around those amenities? And ultimately, those businesses are going to want to know that if we invest in Albion, we're going to get the Rosalind Joneses of the world and enough of them that we're going to make a profit. So, you know, it all works together. And so another thing that I know that we would do, we would go to the River Trail because we're just, just those kind of folks. So um, historic preservation, I don't think that I need to talk a lot about, a lot about that. However, um, one of the things that we're looking to do is to uh, explore the establishment of a historic district commission. Um, we have, uh, interestingly, an, uh, Albion has a, um, the downtown is on the National Register, but there's no historic district commission. And so um, Cheryl and I have already engaged folks on the state level who, when it's time, probably September, not August, uh, are willing to come down and talk about what that means because there's been questions in some of the meetings that we have about what, what does that mean, what does that mean, who enforces, and so we'll get some answers to you on that. Um, I think that the major quarters, we know where those are, and obviously there's opportunities for improvement there. Um, the city's are re recently done an update on the uh, rec parks and recreation plan. Uh, kudos, um, the community people enjoy that resource, so that's, that's an investment that's well, well spent. Uh, moving to transportation. Unfortunately, uh, and, and well, so there's, there's two dimensions here. One is transportation and the other is transit. And so I didn't, one of the things that I haven't included that I do need to include is um, the Superior Street um, redevelopment project. That's a very significant transportation related project. Um, but I wanna, wanna talk again about, as we look at the importance of a walkable community, as we look at the fact that Albion has a very diverse community, the very first thing is that um, Albion has lower rates of automobile ownership than the nation as a whole. That's not a good or bad thing, it's just a fact. And so even though Albion residents have 13% uh, 30, of Albion's population does not own vehicles. And so when you compare to, Al to Calhoun County, uh, that same proportion of people in the community is 8% in Calhoun County, 9% in the United States as a whole, you got 17, and again, this is not a good, bad, it's just a fact. You got 17% of the folks walking to work, which I think is a, actually a good thing. Um, I walk as much as I can. I live in a walkable neighborhood, so I'm not saying this from a negative perspective. I'm just saying these are, this, this is data. This is facts. This is information. So you have low rates of automobile ship, uh, ownership. You have a huge population who are walking to work, which I think is a good thing from a health perspective. Um, but the thing I want to point out is that there's, because of the lack of, pub, lack of public transportation, according to the census data, believe it or not, it shows that 0% of the people in Albion use public, tra public transportation to get to work. So one of the things that the um, Albion tr Citizens Transportation Work Group was looking at is creative ways of resolving that for folks who may be interested in accessing public transportation. I, I don't know where the, the 
data came from, but I know the Albion Marshall Connector, for example, just did some research on their ridership, and there was a significant, I mean, relative to the number of people using it, mm -hmm. that are using it for work. So I'm, I'm wondering if this is just a little more outdated than maybe when the Albion Marshall Connector came into being. I mean, that Fair that enough. available, and now that it is available to some extent, that there is a demand. Fair enough. I'll check with them because they, they were one of the entities that participates in this work group. I mean, I think it was a very uh, well put together group. Uh, the dollar ride and community action team and senior millage and so um, I, I, can, I can verify that number with them. Thank you. Thank you. And that's kind of what I was hinting at. I guess I'll be explicit about it. So if, um, is there, <coughs> Is there any tension between when we say um, we want to kind of prevent um, kind of this leakage of, 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 of sales or whatever elsewhere, and then we have a system that enables that? Is there a way to? Um, I mean, this, and I'm not, I'm not putting you in the middle of anything. I don't feel like that. This has been mm -hmm. discussed before, but. Um, that's one of the things that you know I've been I've concerned has concerned me is that you know if you're in town, like you said, a lot of people have to walk um, to work if you're employed in town. Um, the the, um, the connector does help if you're you know if you're at Tenneco or something like that. But um, so is is there a is there a solution to that? I think what we're trying to do is take a comprehensive mm -hmm. view, and as the mayor pointed out in the earlier discussion, I mean. Different people look at a situation from different from different perspectives. So, in my ideal imaginary world, there are um, enough jobs that anybody who wants to work and walk to work in Albion can walk. It will be a phenomenal problem to have. So, well, I shouldn't say problem, but that would be a phenomenal position to be in that I can walk to my job, and, and that people are willing to do that. Um, the unfortunate reality is that right now there are people who do need to, for whatever reason, go outside of the community for doctor's appointments or shopping or whatever. So we want to, when looking from a comprehensive perspective, to make sure that from a, a public sector perspective that we can facilitate those needs as well. It, um, I guess I'm saying, well, is the, is the vision to include uh, transportation for people um, so let's say I didn't want to walk to work. And I mm -hmm. live in what what are we saying um, from a planning perspective that our approach is to that problem? I don't think we're saying anything at this point. We're saying here's the data. Um, we've looked at goals and objectives, and now the beautiful thing about the next phase. Well, not even the next phase of this project. The next, so we're at phase one is for the planning commission to feel comfortable enough that by the end of the week we have a document that we can share with city council, that we can share with the community that says, here's what we see today, here are our goals and objectives. And then the um, community will have 95 days to give more input into the product. On the 96th day, a public hearing will be held and we'll be able to move forward. And at that point, things like what you're talking about, we've got to roll up our sleeves and drill down in a lot of different areas. And so I don't think there's a, I don't think we're at the point of offering solutions. Uh, and maybe in some cases we are, but in many cases we're not. We're saying here's the data, here's the situation, here's the goal, here's the objective, here's where we're heading. But, the, but after the plan is approved, okay, now we drill down with a housing strategy, with a transportation plan, with you know, and really with an economic development strategy and say it should be this building and this is what we want to do to encourage it. I mean, we have more answers, but we're still gathering information, getting input to, to shape the direction. But as a, so, so basically this as a kind of a goal document, is it appropriate to have as a goal to say, hey, we want to have, for those who need or desire it to, to have some form of public transportation in Albion? Even if we don't give an answer to how we'll do it to say, hey, at least so it's written down to say. Um, if I skip to the, and I don't think it's explicitly stated here, and again, because I think one of the challenges with the previous comprehensive plan 
is that there were things that were written in the comprehensive plan that really shouldn't have been, that didn't warrant being at that level. But I think that the point that you're saying is when we look at the motorized public transportation, oh, excuse me, not there. Uh, Rosalind, I mean, on page 30, objective A is develop a motorized public transportation plan working in conjunction yes. with those entities. And I think one of the points is being made here is that it may be unwise to put that specific uh, language in as a goal because at the end of the day, it may, na may not be feasible. I mean, that, but what A says is that we're gonna be developing a motorized public transportation plan, which may indeed include exactly that goal if it ends up working. But what, one of the things we don't want to do, I think, is like perhaps has happened in other plans, is just put things in there that sound good, but may at the, at the end of the day just can never be done. Mm -hmm. So well, I guess what I'm saying is like, so in that lot, so develop a motorized public transportation plan working in conjunction with the county, county transit system. Okay, so Alvin Marshall Connector and other strategic partners. Could that be, should that be generalized more? Because I guess... What, what I'm saying is the Albion Marshall Connector does a certain specific thing. Um, and while there's, <coughs> there's a possibility of a countywide transit system, you know, being able to take you from point A to point B within the city of Albion, um, that's not um, operational right now, but the purpose of the Albion Marshall Connector is operational right now. You see what I'm saying? So we're we're saying specifically that we're going to work with them unless, I guess I'm trying to say. And other strategic partners. I mean, is your point that that what I'm you, saying is, you want to include the possibility of not working with partners because it's a Albion-centric component to that plan? Well, I guess, I guess my basic concern is, is just, you know, um, what we're doing is we're saying we want to draw people in for growth, but then we have uh, residents around the city who have certain needs. One of those is transportation. Um, and so what I was suggesting is maybe to say, hey, we should have a goal um, that addresses that need of kind of intra-community transportation. And then what I'm hearing is that that might be too specific. Yes. Um, but then what I'm saying is the connector has a specific purpose. And I think the reason why the connector is, is in here is because that's an example of a type of partnership. Okay. So, and the whole point of this discussion and the work that we're going to do this week is if you have other language. I mean, the, we have been through, there are people here who do not want to look at these goals and objectives uh, again, and I'm not going to point them out. Um, but my point is that, you know, we've, been, we've looked really closely at this language. It doesn't mean that it's perfect. If you have uh, alternative language that you want to suggest, send it to me. Okay. We encourage that because by the time this document goes public, um, and I want to send a shout out to Danielle, she's going to be, uh, form formatting is not my expertise. She's going to be formatting it, adding imagery, you know, making it a marketable document. So if we can get your comments this week, um, we want to send something to the community that really, really reflects what this commission um, feels. Because quite honestly, you know, right now I'm, I'm s sort of, sort of the staff to the commission, and so ultimately, you know, my job is to reflect what you think, your thoughts, your opinions, your, your expertise, your knowledge of the community. So um, I want to hit on the non-motorized trail network. Um, one of the things, any other comments on that? Or one of the things, I, I do a lot of research by observation, literally by walking, uh, walking around and wandering, W-A-N-D-E-R, wandering through places. And so I went to Rieger and Victory Park one day. In fact, it was, John, the day that you did the blight tour. So I was in town on a Saturday. I just sort of like wandered around. And I found out that Albion is located on the North Country National Scenic Trail. 
And uh, before I retired, I learned of this phenomenon of trail towns. And so again, as we look at niche opportunities, and again, it's not to say that, you know, appealing to families who want to take their kids to children's museum is a whole economic development strategy, but it's a component. It's not to say that the Bone Theater is the end all be all, but it's a component. And I think that the, uh, the Albion River Trail is another component. Because as you look at the trend of trails and how, you know, there are different segments of people who use trails. Um, you know, some people, believe it or not, who use the trail might be seriously interested in staying the night in, 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 Al in Albion. So not only are you getting somebody who may just need air in their tire and, go and goes to the, uh, the gas station to get maybe water and air or somebody who um, you know, has dinner, you know, but you may even be able to attract, and, it, and this is a very specific segment of people, but people who, you know what, we don't want to spend the night in a busy urban setting because that's where we live. And so the appeal of this, this and, I, and I say this very respectfully, this quiet, uh, calm, and, and one of the things that appeals to me about Albion, and this is my perception, is there's a, a, there's a serenity here. And so when I moved from Detroit to Lansing, I mean, my family said I moved to the country. Um, we know Lansing's not the country, but my point is perception. There are people who, you know, they come to this town and they walk through the downtown. You know, we're gonna stay the night here. Why not go to them? I mean, you're, you've got this time. Why not go to the movie, stay here? Point is that trails are becoming economic drivers. And so with a few key um, uh, decisions like, for example, and I use the example of the Kwamenan Trail in uh, Marquette. So you're on the Kwamenan Trail, and there's a sign that says to you, Welcome to Marquette. You don't even know you're in Marquette. Uh, well, you probably do know you're in Marquette, but welcome to Marquette. So, okay, that's nice. And so the whole point of that sign is to draw you into the downtown. And so you go closer into the downtown, and then you see there's benches. Okay, I can sit here. There's a rack for my bike. Oh, there's a kiosk that's talking about the amenities of the downtown, restaurants that are in downtown, and guess what? You're looking at the downtown. So trails as a way to draw people into your downtown is, a, is an important um, place making activity amenity um, i think that is it in terms of the overview again the last page um, last pages uh, look at the goals and objectives at this point and the um, goal that again i did not add which i think is an important goal was created by the uh, the vista team and i'm going to read it to you I think Danielle had a hand in, in crafting it. But it deals with, and so one of the things I think that I've shared with the commissioners is, I mean, and my covenant with George from day one has been, we want a plan that's actionable and credible. So to me, actionable means when we do it, how do we measure it? So one of the things that I'm gonna send you this week are the metrics that they came up with to measure some of these objectives. Um, and again, you know, these are starting points, but for example, just to pick a random one, um, let's look at which one? Okay, stabilizing the downtown. No, I wanna go to the neighborhood one. And these are just examples of, 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 uh, of possible metrics. So if the goal is strengthening Albion's neighborhoods and the overall quality of its housing stock, uh, metrics that they suggested, which again, you know, you will make the ultimate decision on whether or not these are the objectives that we want to use, percentage of blighted housing units um, based on a community um, assessment, percentage of rental property units um, is home ownership increasing in that area, code enforcement violations during the annual audit, median, median housing value. I mean, those are things that we can measure that say, you know what, we're, we're on track. And not only are they things that we can measure, but from a marketing perspective, they're things that we can use with the community that says, here's our scorecard. We said we we're gonna do these things, we've measured it, and here, here's how we're doing. So, but the, the goal that I wanted to share with you, 
um, that's not in the document that's before you um, that I will be sending you an email is to build capacity and a network of organizations and services to address poverty and meet the needs of residents who cannot afford basic services. So when I think about um, Commissioner Council Member Brown, Barnes, I mean, his concerns were very valid and I was not being dismissive of them in any form or fashion. But as we look at, um, you know, different aspects of this plan, um, I think that this type of goal is one that says to people who don't live in the downtown, who might be the folks who are, um, you know, outside of the workforce, the, the elderly, disabled uh, populations, that you know what, this plan is not, is not for getting my needs. And so I think it's an important objective to be considered. And it's one that I'll be um, sending to you by email this week. So that is my overview. Great. Thank you, Rosa. Let me, let me uh, follow that up with uh, a, a request for any public comments. Anyone from the public who has any comments, questions? Yeah, come on, come on up here. Give us your name. Uh, once again, uh, this is Dr. Raymond Washington, um, and I just have a few concerns mm -hmm. that I want to express. But I have one question first uh, about this vision. Um, it seems like I may be wrong, but your number one priority is housing. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's a number one. I don't think that they've prioritized housing. I think that they have But you want housing to attract people from outside of Albion? It's a component. Because if you don't have it, they cannot. So it's not the only priority, but it's a component. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank including is not including the whole time. It seems like you're concentrating on certain aspects. As for, um, you know, for one question I have, when you did your polling and you have a total, um, I'm a scientist and I deal with statistics all the time and they can be influenced by, by what you want to present. So I think I'm not convinced with your statistics because I don't think your end number was big enough as a matter of fact and I don't know who you polled. So I think this needs a lot of work and a lot of more specific, uh, um, I need to know some numbers, well, me, myself. But this is like very vague to me. That's just me. And if you are willing, I say it very respectfully. The whole point is to get it done. Okay. Well, I didn't mean to sound malicious. This is just, you mm -hmm. know, just how I feel about this. And there's a sense of data, large sense of data. And um, it some of the data was pulled from the charge of marketing analysis. So the census data taken into uh, consideration how many people answered the census or how the, of the whole well, thing? Right, so um, yeah, all the uh, methodology that you just mentioned still determines, depends on how many were, how many responded, mm -hmm. because a 50% could be two people, you know. Yeah, 242 <laughs> so, people. Yeah, 242, that's not a big one at all. For this type of study, quite honestly, um, it's, it's a good number. How many, uh, 200 and, what was the number? 422. Of the whole town? Yes. What's the, what's the population of the town? So that's not a big number. That's just. No, I didn't say it was a big number. I said it was a, well, I'm saying it's a usual number. Because the whole point of this document is just to figure out where we are, where the <coughs> communities are. And so I, I, I want to welcome your expertise. Seriously. Um, there are folks like Scott Evans, the banker who came, and he's going to be bringing that expertise from the, from the banking perspective. And so if you want to bring a scientific methodological expertise, 
I guess my main concern is um, there's a lot of misinformation out and a lot of mad people out in the Albion about, um, about what's going on and they're not informed. Um, yes, it's important to get the information out to the people, I agree, to get them more involved, but to move ahead, I don't know how to go about doing it, but people need to be informed about what's <coughs> going on. Um, and I think that needs to be addressed because they're gonna be really upset. I agree. Okay. So I don't have a problem with that. We got a short time frame, and I will be on the phone. We can be on the computer, and I'll shoot it back to them so that they can see. Um, I don't take it as adversarial. Believe me, I've I worked for some tough folks. But at the end of the day, you get a better product. So it's okay. I'll, I can send you. We can exchange, if that's okay. Sure. We can exchange email addresses. And, um, I don't have an answer. At all, mm -hmm. um, these are. I'm just expressing my concerns from Which what I hear. Good, think, good. So. Because when we send it to the public next yeah. week, we want to have addressed as many concerns as possible yeah. and not be blind. No, I would love to see the public work with you yeah. and to get everyone involved as many as we can right. to make it run really smoothly. I'll give you my email address and my phone number. Okay, good. Can I ask you a clarification question? Sure. At the beginning, did you say the vision focused on housing? No, I asked her. Was her number one priority housing? Oh, yeah. Because I mean, I didn't think the plan read like that. Did you feel like the? Well, the feeling, the. I was, what I gathered from what she was saying was that housing is important to attract people from outside the community. That sounds like me. You're totally neglecting those are who are here, because no one's going to be able to afford that type of housing that you want to bring in here unless you go to a community that can, a community is encompassed in, within a town. You're not talking about the population, you're talking about a community. So that, to me, is dangerous language. Is that really the vision? Just to, I mean, I, I think the vision is worth focusing on for a second because it, it doesn't read like that. I think the vision reads very broadly. So I, and, and just, I guess just to point out, just it, it's worth sitting on just to respond to what you're saying, because I mean, I, okay, so if on page 13, the work workforce, um, the very last, I guess it's a long sentence, the last sentence on page 13. Okay, it says the comprehensive plan update. Okay, so it's based on an understanding that the quality of housing impacts <coughs> the activities of the community, so it starts with that. Then it says which impacts the level of artistic and cultural activity. So it's kind of a logical change. So which impacts the number of entertainment options, which impacts the attractiveness of talent and skilled workers, uh, which impacts the level of economic activity. So when I read that, I know it's not like at the beginning of the document, but I said, hmm, you know, are we, and maybe that wasn't the intent to say that, but are we saying that um, that's kind of the foundation of what we're trying to do? If that language was intended, I think what's going on, I'm going to be extremely frank, actually, and maybe, I know he's not here, so I can't really say I'm speaking. <coughs> I, think, I think the hidden the concern is um, Alvin has changed from what it was, you know, and, you know, we probably talked to Professor Dick about the history of how Alvin was, and I think there might be an um, underlying nervousness about gentrification, about that, that's really the unspoken thing that's not really been talking about or not and so I think that's what needs to be discussed with residents because um, 
it, it could be something that, you know, for example, the Bone Project has turned out to be positive. Kids and stuff is positive. People use that. Um, but I think the, you know, there are kind of backstories and histories, and I think that that informs how people, you know, view this. And so, um, and that's what my question was about, you know, addressing the poverty issue is because it's like, um, it's great to bring people in, and I think, like you said, it makes absolute sense to bring, especially like the retirees back to town. There's no reason people should have to move to Marshall or, or Chelsea if they've worked here for, what, 50 years, like the professor said, uh, and want to be here. So I think that's something we need to do. Um, but then how can we balance that with um, finding some way to kind of, you know, assist, you know, current residents, because that's, that's a big issue, the deficit in, um, you know, job training and job opportunities. Um, so I think that's really what, from what I, from what Marie said, I've heard other people say, is that's the, that's the real concern about, um, we're gonna put people here, and then as a result, what happens to the people who, either through what, even what the mayor was saying about who are, you know, taxed out or priced out. So that's gonna be the big, well, the response, I think, is exactly what Ro what Rosalind was saying. I mean, this is a this is not a finished document. So, if you have specific comments, or uh, Mr. Washington, if you have specific comments, or if any of us have specific comments, this is exactly the time to get them to Ms. Jones, and that's that's how this product is going to be changed and re revised and looked at again by our commission. That's the whole point. And that's uh, 95 days we have to look at this? No. So, <clears throat> yeah, so the 95 days is a period of time after it's been, I think, presented to the council. And so I think the timeline between now and then is within the next week. Is that right? Okay. So if you have specific comments, I definitely suggest you get them to Ms. Jones okay. or get them, get them to, to Cheryl. I mean, she can get them, whatever's easiest for you. Um, and like any of us or anyone else you know who you think really wants to weigh in on this, this is the time. Okay. Can I add something to that? Yeah. <clears throat> I think one of the things Rosalind said too that I think is important is that, I mean, any plan, right, is a living document. I mean, we can, we can set this in stone, right, at some certain date, but I would hate for people from the community or anywhere to think that, that somehow there is no input after a certain date, right? And so I guess I'm just throwing that out there. Like, I think it's something that we should keep alive with this idea that this is a living document. It's open to change. It's open to transition over time. So I'm just, I understand there's deadlines and I'm not trying to say there aren't, but once the document- to walk away thinking that if you don't have input by a certain day, there's no- Okay, once the document is presented to the city council, do you have to vote on it too? accepted or adopted or whatever or what does it mean to be presented to you is that they simply are going to share the draft of this information okay. with the public and then the public has 95 days okay. That's to okay. and, and we're not including you in the public we're saying if you have the opportunity before the document goes to council to have input i'll get it back to them and we'll, we'll take it but the, the city council will say okay now it's a And if I could add, the current schedule is for the city council to have the public hearing on the finalized document and the adoption of phase one of the comprehensive plan on November 28th. Okay. And I want to add to Sean and I had a conversation before this process even started. And what I said to her is exactly what you're saying. We don't want to have a plan that just, the downtown is an extremely important asset. I agree. Thank you. Any other public comments, questions? Okay, moving on to our consideration um, 
uh, for approval of recommendation of five-year comprehensive plan phase one. So, Cheryl, given the fact that we have possible other comments that would be coming in, what, what, what's the suggestion here? In concept, I mean, uh, approving in concept, give an understanding that additional comments might be coming in, or is, is that going to be something that could be as shared through email uh, up until when it goes to council, or what's the suggestion? That's a little tricky. It seems as though you would be voting on it as a concept at the present time, understanding there might be some additional input. Um, you can't vote on it unless right. you call a special meeting so. okay so um, this I, I guess I guess um, what's before us is this version um, and this is uh, essentially our meeting before let's see when would the council get it well we were hoping to have the finalized version by Friday because their meeting is on Wednesday of next week the 24th okay finalized version on friday yes so that's after today yes and after when we might vote correct okay so what was the plan as far as what kind of version was going to go to the council and correct me if i'm incorrect but my understanding was that you would be voting on what was presented today with the understanding that there might be some additional edits okay and the edits would be made in, in what fashion? Primarily through email. Okay. All right. So the suggestion right now is to um, is to for consideration of approving this document, which is before us right now, with the understanding that uh, other comments may be coming in to. Roslyn uh, and other uh, other places for consideration that we might receive those possible edits through email, um, which would then, um, if if there is a suggestion, I guess, for making changes, that also could be presented to the council as, as something in addition to what we vote on, so that the council has that to consider. So, do I have a motion? Okay, moved and supported to uh, approve this version with the understanding that additional comments may be coming, that we receive them through email. Um, if there's a consensus, that those consensus changes would also be presented. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that is approved. Excusing absent uh, commissioners, we have the same two. Do I have a motion to excuse absent commissioners? Support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, they're, they're excused. Citizen comments, again, any general comments of any kind? Yeah, come on up. If other comments are uh, presented or other suggestions, how do you implement those or do you have to vote on including those into the document since you, did, you just accepted it as it is right now? Yeah, so I think the way it would work is, since we wouldn't be really voting, is if there's a consensus through email of those suggested changes would also be presented to the council along with this document um, with the understanding that you know, after the council acts on this, there's a whole 95 days for comments as well. So, um, in order to in order to meet that deadline, in order to have a hearing on the on the 28th of November, we would have to present the council with some document. But I mean, obviously, there's going to be there are going to be comments and suggestions for change probably f you know throughout the next few months. But if there are comments that are received to, with, to us w within the next few days to allow those, allow us to say, yeah, that makes sense, or no, it doesn't, 
that if they if there's consensus that those comments for change could also be presented to the council okay all right yes. we're doing the best we can yeah tom um, so once this goes to council and they act on it assuming they would approve it does that then come back to us to wait for the comments from the 95 day period and then we incorporate those into a final document to present back to the council i think i think just is with the council at that point is it right so that's my group. understanding um it unless the council is making substantive changes to your document then it would come back to you oh what is the substance no, <laughs> as an attorney. Okay. So, so Cheryl, let me just understand this. So, let's say it gets approved in some version. It comes back here, and would we be fielding the comments during that period? Is that is that how it would work? My understanding is those comments are then in the hands of the city council to receive. Okay. Do we have a role to play after that? I don't. Okay, all right, that, I, that makes sense. All right, any other, any other comments? Okay, uh, you know, I wanna take a, I take a moment, I think on behalf of the council to thank all of you who have helped out, Rosalind, thank you so much for all of your work. Um, I mean, it's a tremendous undertaking. Um, also, John, thank you for your work. Danielle, thank you for your work. Um, Alice, the Vista Group, everyone, thank you very much, really, really. All right, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support, any? Support. Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned, thank you.